by slow cooker or oven roasting method. Enjoy these juicy and tender fall off the bone baby back ribs smothered in a tangy homemade barbecue sauce. I'm preparing 10 pounds of pork back ribs with a collection of ingredients all mixed together to make my favorite back rib barbecue sauce. I have my slow cooker ready to see how these ribs turn out with this cooking method. After freeing the ribs from their packaging, I'm rinsing each piece to remove excess fluids from the raw meat. I'm collecting these lengths of ribs in a large metal bowl to divide up into smaller pieces at the cutting board. I usually prepare lengths of ribs whole and uncut, but I'll be cooking them in the slow cooker today. To make the pieces fit, I'll need to divide them up. I'm cutting sections of approximately three to four ribs. Once all the ribs have been sectioned into smaller pieces, this cutting board goes into the sink to be washed. The next step is key to creating juicy and tender meat that falls off the bone. I have a lot of ribs, maybe too many for this five quart cookware. If they don't fit, I'll need a second one. I think this one will do. The lid seems to fit. I'm adding water next. It's a little difficult to see, but I've added enough water to fill half the cookware. After transferring to the stovetop, the lid must be securely in place to simmer the ribs until tender. This lid leaves a slight gap. Two pots might have been better than one. I'll have to see how this turns out. Once the cooking water reaches a boil over high heat, I'll turn the heat down to low to simmer the ribs. In the meantime, I'm collecting my barbecue sauce ingredients to combine them, allowing the flavors to develop. The cooking water has reached a boil. Time to reduce the heat to low and simmer until tender. The main ingredient for this barbecue sauce is ketchup. One and a half cups. Next, three tablespoons of brown sugar. Three tablespoons of cider vinegar. 2 tablespoons of dark soy sauce and a half teaspoon of sambal olek. And one final ingredient I don't have on hand, pineapple juice. I'll use the pineapple juice from this can of sliced pineapple instead, 3 quarters of a cup, and whisk it all together. Time to check on the ribs. Simmering and starting to cook through, but this is going to take a while. I'll leave this meat to simmer for at least an hour. Next, some important flavor notes to add a little zest and tang to this barbecue sauce. I was planning to use the box grater, but I have a better idea. I'll grate these ingredients directly over the bowl with this flat-handled grater. I'm starting with fresh ginger root. Without peeling the skin, I'll grate about one inch of length directly over the bowl. After removing the garlic peel, it's grated next. Then the onion. This is a lot of grating effort. When I use the box grater to grate onions, my eyes are stinging and tearing up. But look, no tears. And almost all of the onion has been grated into a fine pulp. Another whisk, and these ingredients are ready for the ribs once the flavors intermingle for a while. It's been a couple of hours simmering time for these ribs, double the usual time. I think two simmering pots would have been a better idea. I'll use two next time. If you find foamy scum from the bones in the simmering water and clinging to the ribs, you might prefer to give the cooked ribs a light rinse in a colander. I do try to skip this step if the scum is minimal because rinsing does rinse away some of the rib flavor. After collecting the ribs in my large washed metal bowl, I'm draining the excess water before adding the barbecue sauce. After adding the barbecue sauce, it's time to see how many rib sections will fit in my slow cooker. 
My slow cooker is not very big, only four quarts. These rib sections are piled high. I don't think the lid will fit and there are ribs left over in the metal bowl too. This lid is not fitting well. See the gap? Without a snug fitting lid, the moisture required to slowly steam, tenderize the pork and develop the flavors will be lost. It's necessary to remove some of the rib sections. That's better. The lid fits nicely. Time to start the slow cooking process. Because the meat is pre-cooked and still warm, I'll start my slow cooker on low. I have about half of the rib sections left. Two racks of ribs fit nicely into my four quart slow cooker. Two are left over. I'll grab my oven roasting pan for the remaining ribs. I'll divide the remaining barbecue sauce between the roaster and the slow cooker. These ribs will be oven roasted instead at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about one hour. It's been a long time since I last cooked with a slow cooker. I'll check the instruction booklet for this slow cooker to see how much time this will take. There's about five pounds of pre-cooked ribs. My guess would be three to four hours should do. Let's see how long this will take. After one hour of oven roasting, these ribs are ready to come out of the oven. These slow cooker ribs have been in the slow cooker for about three hours. Let's see if they're ready. The ribs look amazing, juicy and tender. Time to plate and serve. This one's for you. Enjoy! Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click the notifications bell to get all the latest under 300 calories recipes.